Hello and welcome back to your favourite travel series, Exploring the Alphabet. It is 6am in the morning, meaning we have been driving through the night to bring you some entertainment from around the world. I travel to a different city for every single letter of the alphabet and we are on letter G. So, my Gs, like they say on Top Boy, actually they don't say that on Top Boy, I think they say Mandem. So, Mandem, what I'm going to do is get inside, brothers, and I'm going to show you how I have spent my peas. I know you're excited, so say less. We've reached security and everyone knows my anxiety when it comes to security because I'm always scared that I get pinned down. But something I've realised is that my bag never ever just goes directly through and back to me it always gets pulled to the side for a search. Now I've put myself to the test this time and I've read the guidelines of what it, that keeps happening for. and. This time, I think there's no reason I shouldn't get it right. So, let's see if I pull this one off. I'm not sure how it's possible that one person can be so thick. Because <laughs> when I first filmed that last clip, I expected to put my bag through and then be able to film my bag coming out and give you like the, the verdict, forgetting that my phone had to go through the machine, obviously. <laughs> but good news is, I passed the verdict. I've got my qualification in security control. Woo! I probably sh I probably shouldn't celebrate that too much whilst I'm still in the eye line of security because they'll think that I'm celebrating the fact I've snuck through me package. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to Gdansk in Poland. I have no idea what to expect. I'm going into it completely blind, but I am thoroughly excited about it. So, on that note, we'll drink to it, and I'll see you on the plane. <laughs> and that must have looked like a really swift, quick transition, although it couldn't be any further from the truth. A prime example of don't believe everything you see on the internet because we was checked in, boarded to come on the flight, and then the staff weren't ready, so we was left outside for 45 minutes, freezing our balls off, so we'll be getting a bit of compensation for that. But we've got a meal deal for the flight, so I'm going to uh, trench through all of that and unfortunately I've got the middle seat which means in approximately 30 to 45 seconds I'm going to become an idiot sandwich. What are you? An idiot sandwich. We have officially touched down in Poland. Flight was fine apart from a couple of things. So at home Carrie does this thing where she, bit of a bad habit, she sits on her armchair, pulls out her hair and then just does that and just like scatters it onto the floor without a care in the world don't matter if you're just over it or anything anyway i ended up getting moved from the middle seat to the aisle seat because a mum and daughter wanted to sit together rather than me being in the idiot sandwich and um the lady at the other end of the aisle she had big long ginger hair so she could possibly be as may's biological mother carrie's long lost sister because she was raking her hair out twizzling it that much till it snapped and then just in the middle of the aisle, right between me and her. Oh, there she goes. I was thinking, calm down, love. I I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be wading through some kind of rug when I get off this flight and have to walk out. Anyway, you don't want to be hearing what happened on the flight. You want to see what this city has to offer, as do I. So we're gonna get to the hotel, check that place out, and then make our plan of action. Might have to dust down these fairy shoes though. <laughs> I have just arrived at my apartment. I arranged a transfer to get here directly from the airport because the travel from the airport was a lot um, longer than our, well, some of our other trips. 
Now, I've just rocked up at this place. I booked it that long ago. I couldn't even remember what I'd booked. Apparently, I booked a full apartment for myself. The outside looks stunning. The inside looks stunning. So, we're going to get in there. Let's see what we're up against. My key's not in there because check-in's not till three. I thought it might have been finished ready earlier. How oh, stupid am I? <sighs> Nothing ever goes right. 30 minutes. Dad, Dad. Yeah, cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just, just, just thought I'd try the, just thought I'd try the door. Because I, I saw that was done. So I thought, hmm, a bit weird because none of them else, none of the others are down. When I walked in, by heck, it stunk of, stunk of like damp. And um, there's a lady in there on her hands and knees scrubbing, so I don't know if someone's been sick in there or something. She was the cleaner. Um, she said she will be 30 minutes and then I can reveal the room. Luckily for you, you can't smell it. So this is a this is a mini win. Um, we are gonna unpack the bag. Looks like the bag has already unpacked itself. In there, all the white substance, the questionable looking white substance, is actually my moisturizer, which seems to have fully leaked all over my brand new toothbrush, all over my toothpaste. Um, and finally, all over my um, aftershave. So, so there is a fantastic start. I have no moisturizer left for the trip. Fantastic. Right. Onto the next stuff. I'm guessing the moisturizer is all over my clothes. That is correct. Well done, Joel. All over the shoes. Then out there are their thermals. So the thermals we can live, we can live. Oh my God, maybe we can't live with it. Look how much. It's like someone's um, had a bit of an adult party in my bag. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. That's a pair of my boxers, absolutely caked in it. What's Carrie gonna think when I go home with pants like that? Hey Carrie, yeah. Um, that big white stain on me pants, right on the crouch. It's not what you think it is. We need to talk about Gdansk. Because now we're here, we're literally dropping a few things off and we're getting out there to see this city. Now, we always start off with a few facts and uh, I've got a, a, quite an interesting one, to be honest with you. Gdansk in Poland was once part of Germany before World War II. And um, the World War II actually begun here. The first shots of World War II was in Gdansk only. It was called Danzig back then, and it was, it was part of Germany. So that's a bit of a weird one. Uh, apparently this city got completely and utterly obliterated um, in the war, literally just down to dust. And I have literally walked outside for about 10 minutes and some of the sites I've seen and buildings I've seen are just extraordinary. So what they've built this place back up to is unbelievable. Because this city is all about war, um, it's very renowned for World War Two. I thought I'd get myself in the spirit of things and I am visiting an attraction that I shouldn't be allowed anywhere near. But while we walk there, I'm gonna show you this beautiful city. <laughs> Hiya mate. Hi. Hiya. I've got a book in at 3 pm. Sit down, please. Sit down. Oh. oh that's very abrupt. 
people of Poland, we've come to fire some weapons. Tell off to my little friend! I've just seen the man who works here having a practice and he sent the sheet out to the back, picked up his weapon, popped it off about 10 times and then brought his sheet back um, like nothing ever happened and each, each hole was in the black bullseye. Um, as for my sheet, luckily they, it won't cost them any money because when it comes back, it, it won't be touched. They can use it for the next person. That'll probably blow, the, blow me back in there. Well, maybe not so <laughs> small, but you feel that, okay? okay. Because the most powerful gun, you feel the kickback okay. here. Once I've shot them all and hit that on every shot, then you sign me, you give me the job. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Excellent. Left thumb, pull the silver button down the to reload. Part. This one. Yes, swipe down. One. Very good. Now it's ready to warm. And now I can make grip for you. Like that. Strong in your hands, lock your arms. And now slowly pull the trigger back. Slowly. Don't hurry up here. This is very important. I didn't expect that to be that powerful. <laughs> That's only like millimeter, right, for shotgun. Slowly pull the trigger back, forget about the coil. Excellent. Again the same, just keep going. Forget about the coil and slowly pull the trigger back. Now a little bit too fast, then you go down. Okay, it's most popular mistake. Slowly. Really slow, you have a lot of time. You don't need to hurry up here. Uh -huh. Very good. I'm good. At, I'm good. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm good. The best you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, but <laughs> but still okay. And like can you see, the uh, first one when you lose your grip when you press the trigger too fast, then the rest in very good place. Nice. Very good. Very good. In my opinion, that was very nice. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. To the same target, we go on 15 meters now. I'm scared to, I'm scared to move them big ones because that one was too hard. Let's bring it in. Watch. Mm. Really really good. Good. Result good. here. All the time you're hitting this place, only maybe two, maybe three times, you go a little bit higher than 10 points fall, okay? Okay. Very good job here. Thank you, thank you. Now we go 25 meters. Yeah, fantastic. This one's heavy. Uh, heavy and a little bit stronger. Fire! And don't worry, watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Only okay, the ammo. You're a little bit tired and you're breathing. <laughs> That's why you start shooting up and down, okay? Yeah. But it's still okay. Ten of ten in target is great. And now shotgun, now. Excellent. And again, just continue. All the time the same. How, we end up how, how many shots of this do we have? I don't know. Shoot. Before they have don't think off. about it. Very good, and now it's empty. Back, check, there, and now you know it's empty. Now we can put your gun down. Use concentration, I must concentration. You, you, uh, you, you, Baba. Yes, we will. Thank you, thank you. This is for you. To show off. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to meet you. God, thank you. Very, Very nice strong handshake. Nearly pulled the rest of my arm off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. I did. I did expect to come out of this place um, being a laughing stock, you know, um, but it's gone the complete opposite way. And with World War Three being on the horizon, they've actually the peer pressured me and they've made me sign a form 
to, to, to fight on behalf of uh, Poland because there's no gunmen to my calibre in the full region. <laughs> so I don't know how I'm going to explain that um, to King Charles. I'm a, I'm a traitor. Just to show you that all of Gdansk isn't perfectly beautiful, the place I've just been uh, was down this long and dull road which is quite fitting considering what we what we was doing there but look in the back it is all complete and utter doom and gloom so we are heading back into the center we we are heading back into the center now he was he was nauseating nosy sound we're heading back into the center now we're gonna tackle a few more things behind me in a minute you'll see the neptune fountain which is one of the main monuments in Gdansk, dating back to the 1500s. Now, Gdansk is well known for architecture, monuments, cozy streets as well. Um, but we on this series don't really spend too much time looking at them just because they're kind of hard to make exciting. Although, I have got a bit of a fact about this. So when it was being constructed in the 1500s, the Pope was concerned about the manliness of the um, fountain, the man on the fountain, should I say. So do you know what they did? <laughs> they made the people creating it make his manhood smaller, dinky, like man. <laughs> So we're going to have a closer look at him now, or should we say, his pace. I mean, if that thing's it, then he's still he's still doing well, isn't he? And he's riding Gary. Look, the dragon. And while we're on this subject, round the corner, we have the biggest brick-built church in the world. Tell me about it. I bet you, I bet you can't um, contain your excitement, eh? And like all other places we visit at night time, it just looks more and more beautiful. What doesn't look beautiful is the inside of my tummy. Do you know why? Because there's nothing there. So, I'm gonna go find somewhere nice to eat. I'm taking you with me and we're gonna have some fine dining. The menu was really adventurous and all they did was bayo buns and they had loads of bits of stuff in there and the waitress came over and said what do you want to order and i said i'll be two minutes and, and now she's turned her back i've done a runner because i've seen the shinies opposite so i'm gonna go there <laughs> i hadn't even had time to put my hat on because i was that worried that i'd have offended her but that's that's far too adventurous for me but lovely building on the inside <laughs> I've gone from literally wanting nothing in the last place to going a tiny bit overboard. So I ordered a spring roll for starters. I've come like two ginormous wraps and then prawn crackers as well that have come with dips. And then I've ordered tons for the main and um, I don't think I'm going to be able to eat it all. So I might have to do another runner from here. <laughs> I'm not too overjoyed about this Chinese. This is the egg fried rice. Looks like a pound one out of a pack back at home. So it's nothing like the one at home. The only good thing is it's gonna be overpowered by the um, beef sirloin and garlic sauce and the portion of chips that we've got to tie it in with. So we're gonna dig in, okay? I'm in that much of a food coma. I've um, jumped a taxi, which, which is, it would have been a 20 minute walk. I've jumped a taxi, because I just can't even straighten my back of it that much Chinese. Um, it's 7 p.m. here, which means it's 6 p.m. in 
England and it feels like it's about midnight so I don't know if it's because I've been up for so long or because I've ate so much but I am ready for my bed that is day one in Poland completo tomorrow is gonna be magic good morning everybody welcome to what country are you in again Poland <laughs> I totally forgot it is half eight in the morning um I've just had a beautiful first time with my kids. It always sets me up for a nice day um, when I'm missing them. Only problem is I'm an hour ahead here and they get up at half seven. So I always set an alarm when I'm awake at half seven so I can bring them. And I forgot about the an hour's difference. So I set, a an hour, I set my alarm for half seven here, which means it was half six there. And I was sat waiting for them when no one was replying to me. And then I realised... <laughs> For some weird reason, don't mind me by the way, just got my thermals on, <laughs> apart from the socks. <laughs> some weird, weird reason, I put, I packed for today, like this long trench coat, a black t-shirt and some skinny jeans as if that was going to be warm enough. Don't know what I was thinking, so I might wear that on my way out. I'm doing this video because I don't want you to see me wearing my bear ghost jacket again and thinking, oh, he's just wearing the same outfit, because I'm not, all right? I'm just wearing a warm one because I can't deal with the cold. So, let me just go get dressed. See? Different outfit completely. I'm just wearing the same coat. But because I don't have a cameraman yet, maybe one day, um, and all you see is a little floating head bobbing down the streets, you wouldn't know. So now you do, okay? Do you know what? Because of my moisturizer explosion, there was a tiny bit left, and I thought maybe I could salvage it. So I've poured some water in it, and then I'm gonna like just put it on because surely it'll still like do the same job it looks absolutely grim but i think that will work <sighs> right let's go after quickly realizing yesterday that i am fully capable of being a veteran and the fact that World War II actually started here. I think it'd be rude not to go to the Museum of the Second World War that's here. I did see the giant building yesterday and thought, do you know what? We're gonna have to do it. I am worried that it is all just in Polis. Polis, because <laughs> I can't read Polis. But um, another thing I've realized when I've been walking around the streets of um, Gdansk, is that we're not stereotyping because we don't stereotype stereotype here it's 2024 but i've realized how many of the men have like beautiful piercing eyes <laughs> i mean i don't think i don't think it'll surprise anyone that i've been checking out men's eyes but um no what I, but what i mean by it is that they're so like endearing like they but they're frightening like they all look real tough so i've been like like they all when they're walking around, it's like they're all like focusing so hard, but they look hard as well. And I want to look hard, so I've been practicing. But I can't do it without my big teeth coming out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a miserable day today. It's, uh, it's just that rain that gets you real wet, but it's real light at the same time. Uh, Loads of stuff behind me, someone's reading it all, but reading's not really my thought. I just like to use my eyes, <laughs> like kids do, yeah. And this guy here is really, really big. He's got a giant head. Let me zoom in on that cranium. Wow! I'm the only youngster here. There's a bit of a granny's meeting going on behind me. Sorry about the bad camera lighting, but anyway, we're in. Are you coming? Are you coming in, ladies? Are you coming in? Yeah? Huh? Nah. Ladies, ladies didn't want to join the Hulk. <laughs> Obviously not into toy boys, all the way down. So you go to minus three, and when you get to minus three, um, you buy a ticket apparently, but you actually have to press minus three to get there. Yeah, that's how you wear lifts. 
It's pretty cool in here, you know, when you come out the lift. We're obviously underground right now. Um, and I've just bought my ticket, it was 29 slotty. So you, whatever the money is here, you divide it by five to get your English price. So work that out, I don't know, like six pounds to get in. Um, that was quick maths, I know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we've got a tank and everything down here. I've got my ticket. I don't, I've, obviously, this is just the free bit, so there's not a great deal going on. My mouth is dry, so I am going to go get a quick drink from the cafeteria at the bottom of there. And then right at the bottom of here, in the corner, you get your ticket stand, scanned and go through to see what's been going on. It's three floors high. Um, so I assume you work your way back up to the top. That is, a, that is the most knowledgeable system. So we'll be up there a bit later, but first I need to show you how this world war started and how it managed to finish without me being involved. I either must have me down as a thief because when I've just gone to go and scan my ticket in. He said, you must leave your bag in the locker. <laughs> must think I'm gonna, must think I'm gonna start taking, uh, taking tanks and stuff home in my bag with me. So, I'll listen to them, I suppose. I'm actually gonna stick my coat in there as well because it's, it's boiling in here and I wanna feel the benefit when I'm outside. Right, right we're in. I did, have a feel, I did have a feeling he would say to me, you cannot film in here. But uh, he didn't, so here we are. It's a really strange building. Like look how long it is and all these have little rooms with stuff going on. So I'm gonna browse the information, see if there's anything worthwhile and then I'll feed it back to you in nits, nits and bits. See, I literally, I don't have the, like, patience to stand and just watch that. Like, it's like a stand-up cinema about the war. And uh, there was a lot of big political words in there that I kind of just, it's not me. I don't know if this museum is going to be for me. I kind of just like walking around and talking to you guys. Oh, look, some pictures. Let's go look. Prime example, because in this room it says, when the, first world war, when the First World War ended, most countries in Europe were permanently democracies, but in many of them, democracy soon became under attack in some democratic governments and blah, blah, blah. Like, I, my brain can't take them long sentences, sentences in. So, this is a poster room, if, if you want to see. Um, this could be interesting for someone who was like, I don't know, I'm interested in like, in hist with history, I'm interested in buildings like what they used to be 100 years ago compared to what they are now and like how they look different. That's my like, I'm obsessed with stuff like that, but stuff about like war. El Chapo's here for some reason. The Colombian um, Lord. <laughs> I've just realized I keep walking into like these random rooms and just like, hovering around everybody and pretend I'm reading something they just walk out. It's so pointless me being here. <laughs> this is cool. I'm literally just in this room which is just filled with loads of, loads of like just ra random stuff about like Nazis and stuff like that. I looked to my left and I thought I was looking into, into the past. Watch this. It's like an old-fashioned street. I don't even get how it's done. Let's go. They've made an old-fashioned street. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go into the past. Come on, suckers. Dois cavalos se encontraram em sua cidade natal. Um branco como That part was absolutely riveting for anyone who didn't know what the guy was saying. He was actually saying that Adolf Hitler, um, when he was 13, he had four ingrowing toenails, which caused him severe pain. I will say though, that no matter how much I take, like, we'll walk around these places and take the make. I'm not undermining how like hard the times must have been. Because if I was born in these times, I would have been absolutely terrified. It would have been awful. So, um, be thankful for the world you live on. Even though it's still like a nasty place sometimes. When I'm walking around these places and filming myself, 
um, obviously when I start laughing at something, like when I make myself laugh and I'm like, <laughs> then I'll stop recording and put it down. I still like walk around afterwards, like chuckling to myself and I think how weird must I look just like on my own, just with my goofy head, like <laughs> laughing to myself. Well, I, I definitely do look weird because so many people like look at me as if to say, like, who is that nerd? But it don't matter because I've got um, people, people who rely on me to show them this city. All these type of rooms are the ones, like, you know that I'm not interested in them. But I did say earlier on about, like, I like seeing, like, different buildings and what things look like before. And we saw the street earlier on, and then there's, there's another one. So if there's a bit more of this, if there's a bit more of this, we might stick around a tiny bit longer. Ooh, made me jump. What? Made me jump. I thought you was pretend. I thought you was a, a, a fake person. A mo a, I thought you was a model. Dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, you scared me then. Goodbye, museum. See you again, never. Next stop, Crazy Pets. As soon as I've rocked up, there's um, some like goats and alpacas and stuff in the back there. There's a parrot on the parrot on the sand. So we'll go have a little look in here. Hopefully I can handle some parrots. Uh, I'll learn them some naughty words. Can I get through the door? So I've been given, I've been given a big list of rules, basically not to stand on any parrots, what to feed them and, and loads of other stuff, but I won't really pay any attention to any of it. So now I have no idea what I'm meant to be doing all I know is I've got this pot of food in my hand and I'm absolutely frightened to death about um giving them to the parrots in case they attack me so I'm just holding it like under my arm like this <laughs> braving it I'm braving the lion's den right do not attack me guys do not attack do not attack right anyone want anything but don't come and get on me okay okay anyone want any grub right look I've got a bit of grub Hey. None of them want anything. Hey, look at this guy. No, none of them want it. Oh. Ah, yeah. Say that again. Like, don't, don't touch. Okay. Been escorted out. I don't know. I didn't even do anything wrong, did I? I just had the cups in front of someone. She's gone to get the manager now. Oh, Jesus Christ. Christ on a bike. I'll just wait here like a naughty school kid. I won't mind. There's all these kids in here. All the kids have been real good and none of them have got sent out. And then there's, there's me just waiting. I had, not one parrot has took anything yet. I've got in trouble. Let's see what she has to say. Miserable git. I was just minding my own business. Just came wading in. I don't have all day, love. So I've got our clarification, guys. I was in trouble because the room I went in... <laughs> get this. The room, the room I went... Oh, piss me now. The room that I went in, outside of it, there was tons of people just stood there in a massive, like, group. And I was thinking in my head, there was just, like, I didn't really think. So they're waiting for an inspector to go in and Joel just roamed in on his own with his bed scene running around. <laughs> she did say, get your food in your hand in this one because the parrots are really aggressive and they will try and eat your cup. So I'm going to put some in my hand and then I'm hiding the other bit under my armpit and hopefully they won't find it. Let's get in there. Can I go in this one? Can I go in? Yeah, don't stand me off this Sam. Oh dear, don't any of you come near me. Oh shit. Right, here's, here's one. Let's try, and, let's try and make friends with this guy. Oh god, they're, they're scary. They're scary. I don't like them. Right. Oh, oh. 
Do you just feed it? Hello. Hello. What's this? Ah, it bit my hand. It bit my hand and I dropped all my food. It bit my full hand. Didn't hurt though. Win. Right, come on, I'll go. I'll go find some of us then. If you don't want my if you don't want my full big aggressive git. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Oh. There you go. Take what you need and then piss off. Take what you need. Yeah. Do you want any more? Do you want any more? No. Ah. No. Not my zip. Not my zip. Take the food. Not the zip. Not the zip. Excuse me. Ah, ah, ah. What do I do with all this? Ah. Oh. 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 Food. How do I get it off? Is that a woman? Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, there's another. Oh. <laughs> Oh, look at this guy. Hello. 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 Yeah, he likes me. Look, he's putting... Come on, get on, get on there if you want. You can, little guy. Go on, get on. Yay. I like, I like this one. Oh, this... She's getting a... T oh. Oh, oh no, I don't like the big ones. How do you get them off? I want the little one on, not you. I don't want you on, big boy. Do you want it? Do you want some? Don't fight me. Get off. Oh, shit, there's loads coming. Where's the little one gone? Get off me. How do I get it on? Excuse me. Get this big one off me. Oh, it won't go. Come on, get on your patch. I'll drop you off. I'll drop you off. Get on your patch. Oh, get on your patch. Oh, they're scary, aren't they, love? Eh? Where's that little one gone? It's gone now. I've lost my little one. I wanted that. God, honestly, my hat. They keep quiet. They keep coming to me. The big ones. No, no problem, mate. Like, oh, look, his head's come out. He it just, it just turned into Spud Man. <laughs> there is tiny other bits of this um, place that isn't just parrots. I think there's an aquarium and stuff, so we'll have a little wish around there as well. Yeah, I think that's my piece of leaf. Believe it or not, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm just um, sat outside of uh, Crazy Pets now, because I'm calling it Crazy Pets, because I can't pronounce Papa Guinea. Oh, it's called Papa Guinea. I can pronounce that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just taking in a bit of air, gathering my thoughts, bringing myself back down, down to ground level after that emotional roller coaster. Now, it's half past one in the afternoon, which means I am hungry and we're going to get some food. And although I would rather be eating at all these kind of places, I did make you guys a promise to try some Polish cuisine. So we are going to this place. Apparently the top things to try are Polish dumplings and the Polish beetroot soup. I've never tried beetroot in my life and I like dumplings with my stew, but I've got a funny feeling it's gonna be nothing alike, but Let's get in there. The place that we've come to is absolutely heaving. I had a, the impression, when I thought of it in my head, I thought of like somewhere real grubby with like dirty floors and stuff that I'd be coming to. But it's the total, total opposite. It's really busy, so it must be nice, uh, nice food. At least we're, we're not gonna get um, poisoning of the stomach. They do our, um, they do our beetroot soup and our dumplings. So we're gonna get them ordered and we're gonna give you the verdict. Hey, the toilets are, toilets are really good. The only problem is when you go to the toilet, I only need a way, I don't need to sit down. So you've got to put your feet on here and then I'm gonna to have to pee Psss, all over the door once it's closed. <laughs> Psss. The dumplings have arrived and the dumplings are, see, see I thought that I would, I, I thought that I might like the dumplings because they're like pasties. 
So this is how the dumplings have come. And they've come with like a garlic sauce, so that ain't so bad. There they are. You can get all different kinds of things in these, so I went for the least adventurous. I went for like a, a chicken curry kind of one. Because all the other ones had like real <laughs> adventurous stuff in it, like cucumber and pickles and all that junk. But we're gonna have a dip. We're gonna bite into it. Wow. That, that is unbelievable. So it's like a, basically like a chicken and curry pasty, but the bread's real garlicky as well, like the dough's real garlicky. If you come here, you need to try these. Look at them. My mood's just completely changed now because because the soup has arrived and the soup <laughs> doesn't look as good so in the soup while the camera's rolling I'm going to have a glug of it <coughs> even the smell, even the smell, that is, is horrendous. It's like real sweet, but I can't, I can't, I will stick to these. Oh. That is so bad. I, someone told me it was going to be cold as well, and it's real, it's real warm. But the beetroot soup is a no. I just about shook off the beetroot soup because it made it made my stomach do somersaults. And then I looked to my right, and the lady's eating. I, I have no idea what it even is. Someone will find out what this is for me while I head out the door of this place. <laughs> I should have probably picked um, to do this early in the day because my tummy's full from all the uh, puddings. But we're going for a walk to, um, basically it, it's a mountain that, and when you get to the top of it, it overlooks Gdansk. So I don't think it's like a mountain to the um, vicinity of the one we climbed in Edinburgh. Um, but hoping to get there before it gets dicky dark. I've realised how much I say Dicky Dark. Hopefully, I can spread Dicky Dark around the world. But it's far out, so we're going to get a, a walk on, get to the top of the mountain, show you a big view of the beautiful city that is Gerdans. We're at the top of the Gora Gradowa hill i have realized in poland whenever you pronounce something how it's spelled it's always completely different because i've walked up to people whilst on this trip and said could i go to for example the go the go gora gradowa and they've said oh you mean the shnishni i'm like huh if you like but here we are at the top there's a massive monument here and then there's a little like a tiny museum behind me all in polish and you do get full paranormic views of the city so we're going to go up to these steps in a second have a look at the view from that side but the view from here where i'm looking now whoosh, is incredible um but it'll be better from my other camera so i'm going to give you a different view And we will go on that big wheel before we leave.
So there it is behind me. I promise you would come the Amber Sky and I'll get on to why it's called the Amber Sky. When I've been walking around Gdansk, I've realized there's so many different like pieces of jewelry that is uh, like amber gemstones and there's a really interesting reason for it. Yes, I'm coming back with the facts. Um, the highest source of amber is located to the east of Gdansk and with the right current and wind and weather conditions, a mesmerizing amount of gemstones wash up onto the shore and that is why Gdansk is fam uh, famous for the colour amber just like my favourite football team let's get up there thank you thank you and we're off The sun's gone down, which always makes it harder to film. And there's football on, so I am kind of throwing. I'm making excuses so I can go and watch the football. So I'm going to have a look around, see if I can find a nice little sports bar. And we're going to watch football. Look, look at this, right? It's, it's the 2nd of February. I know you'll be watching this a lot later on. But the lazy gits here. It, so, hi, hi guys. Hi, You're hello. all right. What's your names? Uh, my brother, man. Julia. What's, Julia. Oh, yes. nice to meet you. Yeah, just say hello. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can explain this to me. Christmas tree. Why? Why now? It's not Christmas. It's not Christmas now. I know. I Lazy. Was why it's Christmas? Uh, if Christmas tree in uh, February. I can't work it out. Lazy pe Lazy people of yeah. Poland. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we're going to go find a bar, uh, a sports bar, and have some food. Before we sit down, I've got something to show you all. Our Exploring the Alphabet stickers have arrived so on the sticker it says exploring the alphabet it's got every flag in the world it says if you found this photo please take a selfie with it and send us the photo and there's our handle redhead residence now this bar is packed and this toilet is the only toilet in there so it's used for uh, by men and women so i thought this is the ideal place because it'll get seen by a lot of people so we're not, because it's the debut, we're not just gonna do one. We're gonna do a few more, okay? So first of all, we need to peel them up. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. First one on top of the door. We're on. And then the second one is going to be above the toilet. So all the men having a wee can't miss it. Because when you're in toilets and you're having a wee like this, you always read what's in front of you. Anyway, now that's done, you know that I love you, I love the bones off you, but it is football time, so I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm very excited this morning, yeah, because we had a couple of great days, you know. Um, I've had, um, I've had a fantastic time here in Poland. Um, but you all know I have American roots, and, um, because we fly back and don't have much time, and I'm hungry, I thought, I will look for somewhere to eat. I stumbled across an American diner, which is like, I don't know, five-minute walk on the highway? Now that sounds 
fantastic to me. So what we're going to do, we're going to get ready today and we're going to go down to the American Diner and probably eat some hot dogs or maybe some um, ribs or something like that just to, to touch the American taste buds before we head back home to the U.S. of A. Um... I'm going to go get in the shower, I'm going to stick on an outfit, and then we're going to go right there. You better believe it, guys. <laughs> I'm feeling really alive today. Um, I had a very long sleep last night. Thoroughly enjoyed my time here. So we're going to just talk about Gdansk while we're out to the American Diner. There is... A lot of here, there's loads and loads of restaurants and bars that are like underground. Like it's like everything like that is underground. It's really weird, but it's like quite quirky and cool. And uh, yeah, you definitely like it. If you if you came to, I don't know if you wanted to come to Poland as like a party holiday. There's a there's a small town that's literally about a 10 minute taxi ride from Gdansk called Sopat. So if you do want to party in Poland your Poland party is, then Sopat is definitely the place you need to be going. Um, obviously, we, we haven't been there because we we're exploring letter G and not letter S. A few years later. Well, that was one heck of a journey. My hands are a bit sore, but another letter, letter G, is complete. Seven down, 19 more to go, and we have our breakdown, our flight, £29.98, accommodation, £60.57, airport parking, £56.99 insurance £1.55 and spending money in total with transfers with diesel was £281 which brings a grand total of £430.9 but this trip I ate like an absolute king I got a few taxes that I didn't necessarily need to get I am adamant that you could come here for a few days and spend £100 it is literally that cheap so i've gone a bit overboard we could have done this a lot cheaper but we have had the time of our life so another episode comes to an end and please 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 if you've enjoyed this episode make sure you watch the rest make sure you hit the subscribe button and obviously like and comment and you know how it goes please come back for more there's other letters to explore yeah.